Hey, David and Ryan Sealit from the Kick Out Podcast. Just want to say congratulations for today. Um, how important was this win for you to, you know, discount the naysayers about your title run at the moment? <laughs> how important? Transitional. Paper. Again, more things to shove down people's throats. Before I was champ, you can't do it. I did it. He can't hold the title. I held it. He can't beat Drew in Scotland. I did it. Drew called me a paper champion. He said I didn't deserve it. He said I couldn't beat him. Everybody thought I was going to lose it. I was just a transitional champion. My ass. Damian Priest is the world heavyweight champion, the face of Monday Night Raw. Against all odds, against all hate, I am the champ, and I'm going to continue being the champ. The following event is a more Ace Audio production. Introducing first, from London, England, the team of Ace and Skillet. This is Before the Kickout. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Kickout. It's Clash at the Castle review today. We're going to be talking everything Clash at the Castle pay per view, but I've got some special people with me. First, I'm going to introduce my Kickout brother. He's a rapper. He's a sports and music journalist. He goes by the name of Scandus. Scan, how hey. are you? Yeah, I'm good, my bro. Um, yeah, man, thanks for um, having me along for the ride today. You know, it's definitely always a pleasure to to get on our kick out business. So, yeah, man, let's go. Thank you for thank you for joining us. And uh, we have a sports personality, a content creator, a journalist in his own right. We got Dell. How are you, sir? Yo. I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm very excited to be talking things about Clash at the Castle. It's been a great weekend of wrestling, and we've got some more stuff to talk about. So, bro, let's get into it. Let's get into it, man. We might have um, uh, Ashton join us as well, actor, Kick Out Pass podcast member, Ashton, join us as well. But um, yeah, an exciting weekend at Scotland. I was uh, I was privileged to be able to be out there. Um, we got some great content in this episode. We'll be um, having some interviews within throughout the episode. But hey, speaking of Ashton. He's here. Ashton. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about that, guys. What an entrance, bro. Uh, what an entrance. <laughs> hello. Thanks for having Ashton. me. My uh, Ash- mic. Thank you for really joining bad. us. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, Thank you for me. joining us, Ashton, man. How you been? Yeah, good, thanks. I'm glad to be with you guys. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been uh, way too long. You've been busy yeah. doing your tours, yeah. acting yeah, all around yeah. the UK. Has that yeah. come to a close? Are you still doing some more shows? Or is that is that is that um, yeah, it came to a close last week. So I'm 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 off for a bit, for like okay. a couple of months now. Um, but all yeah. right. Okay, well, I can't wait to hear all your thoughts about Clash at the Castle. Uh, funny enough, I was I arrived in Glasgow, Scotland on Thursday last week, last week Thursday. We did a media morning on the Friday. When, when myself and the rest of the media crew got into the Hilton Hotel, we go to the elevator. Who do we see at this elevator? We see... <laughs> That gave us a major spoiler of what was going to happen in the main oh, event. No <laughs> we saw CM Punk with AJ Lee. Um, I think they were, I think they were in the gym or whatever. I don't know. He nearly joined us in the lifts, but he decided to go to a different mm-hmm. lift. So that kind of not ruined everything because we didn't know exactly what Punk was going to do, but we knew Punk was going to be involved. But let's talk about Clash at the Castle. Um, it was in uh, the first PLE in Scotland, so history was made. A lot of it was built around Drew McIntyre, kind of similar to how a lot of it was d- built around Drew McIntyre in Cash in the Castle 22 in Wales. Yeah. Um, so it, it does seem Cash in the Castle is built around Drew. Drew is the start of this pay-per-view, but he doesn't have a, tra- a great, great track record at these Cash in the Castle pay-per-views. It's, it's quite strange. Um, mm. But yeah, leading up to this, uh, I can't remember this, if there was any dark match. There was a dark match that you guys probably wouldn't get to see. No, it probably would have been in the kickoff show. Would it? Well, did, did, was this on the kickoff show? Pretty Deadly versus Cedric Alexander and his, I can't remember his tag team bottle's name, which is quite bad. Does anybody know his name? Yeah, the Adonis. The Adonis, yeah, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, was that on... Was that on the kickoff show? Did anyone see the kickoff show? When they showed them during the kickoff, I don't think it was on the kickoff no, show. I, I think they it. actually they showed them in the crowd during the kickoff show. Okay, okay. So that actually wasn't okay. So that must have been a dark match then. Okay. Um, but you know, I think I kind of fast forward straight to Clash. SmackDown actually happened in in Glasgow as well. Uh, what did you guys think of SmackDown first before we get into Clash? I'll come to you first, Scan. 
your thoughts on the go home show of SmackDown? Um, yeah, man, it was a solid episode, you know, crowd. It gave us a nice little preview of what we was going to expect from the crowd. And I, I found it interesting that they were actually able to find another gear, you know, yeah. for, for Clash. Um, yeah. But I mean, overall, front to back, man, you know, we've got some interesting things happening with the um, new bloodline. And um, yeah, I'm just curious to see where it goes, you know? Yeah. Uh, Dell, uh, that promo between... Uh, AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes. Uh, what did you think of that? Do you know what? I think AJ doesn't get as much flowers as he deserves on the mic. I feel like he can really sell that he sells his rivalry so well on the microphone. I think it kind of goes under the radar a little bit, and he's mm. kind of he kind of puts his he put he sells it to the point where you're like. I at some point started to believe that he was going to win the title. Like he really knows yeah. what he's doing, man, and nothing. I think this rivalry actually really like highlighted the great things about both of these wrestlers in which they can really they really grasp what it's like to be a fan and you can tell they both like being in the ring and I think Cody I think a lot of people probably looked at this rivalry and not necessarily were unsure about it but it was more like AJ's coming to the end of his career is this really the right sort of rivalry to kind of kick start Cody Rhodes in this this new Triple H era but for me, I think it's been an unbelievable rivalry. I thought like the, like the build-up has been great. And sort of, I feel like the promo level from both of them, they really knocked out of the park for me, in my opinion. But some people might choose to disagree, man. Ashley, were you invested in this feud? Did you really enjoy the match that happened in Backlash in France? And did, were, you, were you quite like, okay, it's, that was a great match, but I'm not really in tune with this feud. But when, when they had that, war of words on SmackDown, were you really invested going into Clash? Yeah, I was, I was really invested in it. I think the, the match at Backlash was, um, it was great, but obviously you had the, the crowd as well that really helped that, like, what a great crowd at Backlash. Yeah. Um, and all of Cody's matches right now have all been, like, single matches, no like, no story to them, really. Um, and also, I think this this uh, rivalry uh, really brought a different side of Cody Rhodes um, with it, within with AJ and Cody, like more of a not a heel side, but like just not like goody two shoes Cody Rhodes. I thought that's good. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else of importance that we should talk about when it came to SmackDown before we get into Clash of Castle? I'm trying to remember. Yes, Scan brought up the Bloodline. That was great, and Randy Orton made the save. Obviously, we had um, LA Knight go into um, Logan Paul's house. That's what I was going to say. Uh, yeah, Literally yeah, yeah. flying all the way to Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that house was insane. The house was crazy. That's, but that's, the house was what I think. Yeah, scan, I think scan frozen. Scan. Yeah, yeah. The house... night's just showing up at people's houses. That's his, that's his thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm being honest, though. I think it's actually something quite cool, man. Because you kind of mm. used to get it back in the day when you know when they used to have the Triple H and Randy rivalry, where Triple H just turns up at Randy's house and yeah. starts mm. beating him when he's trying to go to bed. Like I think that stuff was cool, but. Because we're now in a social age where people have probably seen what Logan Paul's house looks like. Like, yeah. they know that he's got this crazy house. And so for now, to be shooting those segments and those sketches on Logan Paul's property, they are yeah. not stupid, man. They know the game they're playing. They are literally, they've, yeah. got, they've got the universe in the palm of their hand. Honestly. Right, right. Well, okay, I think we should, when we, I don't think with this much of SmackDown, we need to talk about really and truly. I'm going to uh, play an interview I had with AJ Styles before we kick off the review of Clash of the Castle. So this is myself with AJ Styles in Scotland. Is the kick out. The phenomenal AJ Styles. You had me going, man. You had the blue That's suit on, and I, 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 I thought, wait a minute, this can't be true. And then you hit Cody with the ruse, and then you're telling him that you're back. AJ Styles, the match that you had in France, one of the best matches for a long time, in my opinion. How, how did that make you feel? Oh, well, I mean, it was unbelievable. The, uh, the crowd was unbelievable, right? Crazy. How could you not have a great match in front of fans like that? So, being here at Clash of the Castle, just I'm saying, like, 
they got a lot to live up to. Absolutely. You know, if they're going to compete, they better compete. When I when I think of AJ Style fans, because I'm one myself, when I think of AJ Style, fans, I don't think I don't think we're fans of just you and WWE. We've seen your whole trajectory. We've seen you from Ring of Honor, from TNA, New Japan. So it's it's, it's it, you deserve. I feel you deserve that moment when they were singing that song, well, the I phenomenal song. I mean, I don't deserve anything, but I I appreciate I disagree, that moment. But I disagree. But okay, and and but. To this weekend with Cody, uh, how are you feeling about it? He he had he was the guy that defeated the streak, Roman Reigns. He's not, and, and you know, and unfortunately, you you, you came up short sure. in France. Yeah. Are you confident? I'm I'm very confident. I mean, we're talking about something that's right up my alley. I mean, you talk about rules in a I don't quit match. There are none. Yeah. yeah so no, you know, the, Cody's not one of those guys that uh, maybe he's not, I don't know, mad enough or mean enough to do what I'm going to do to him. I don't want to do it, but I want the heavyweight championship. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I have to do. It's a tough business. It is. And lastly, um, if, that, if that was sincerely, if that was going to be your last hurrah when you actually cut that promo, what would have been your number one highlight working at the WWE? Number one highlight uh, would probably be my debut at the Royal Rumble. I totally agree. Uh, I went crazy, man. It's a moment in time I'll never forget, and the fact that people actually cared about it uh, and it proved mind. the doubt was wrong. It proved the ones who said, oh, I don't know if AJ Styles would ever. It, it totally, I went, the whole crowd went crazy. The whole crowd went crazy. And then, uh, although the redacted name did not care about it, um, <laughs> I, 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 had to, I had to make people believe, and I think I did that. You surely did. AJ, always Thank a fan. You. Thank you. So, yeah, Clash of the Castle, it kicked off with a bang with the I Quit match between AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes. Uh, I'm going to go to you first, Ashton. How do you feel about this match? Did you like the involvement of Mama Rhodes? The crowd, was it, what did you think of Scotland crowd being red hot in the entrance? Tell me what you think about this quick match. Yeah, I think Scotland did really well with the, the, the crowd did really well compared to France. France is great, but uh, with the Cody chant singing Cody's uh, theme song as well. But I thought, I did think the match was great. Um, I liked seeing a different style, you know, instead of just having a straight up singles match, having the I quit match. I'm not too, I'm not a big fan of I quit matches just because living through the days of John Cena, I quit matches, but um, it was, yeah. And having uh, Mama Rhodes slapping, it was really funny because she slapped him the first time, didn't quite get it right. The second time she got it and then she thought, let's go for it again. Yeah. But no, I thought it was really Mama good. Mama Rhodes with the hat trick. <laughs> Mama Rhodes with the hat trick, baby. Um, uh, Dell. Now, I, now, obviously, I was there live in attendance, so I, I, in my opinion, I can tell that this crowd wasn't as red hot as Lyon, France. Uh, obviously, that translated through the TV screens, right, Dell? Yeah, man. I, do you know what I think it was? I think it was almost a backfired plan from WWE in the sense of they. I think it was they anticipated by putting that match on first, that would really start things off on a really high note. And I think it was in terms of... Which, the which it did. Product, which it, which it yeah, did. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's like the yeah. wrestling and the, the match itself was unbelievable. And it did... By the end, people were riled up. And by the time everything else happened post-match and Mama Rose that we were just talking about with the, with the slaps, like by the end of the match, the crowd were riled up. But I feel like the initial stages... It was essentially the crowd built into it. By the end, the crowd were really into it. But I feel like the initial stages, I don't think they could have touched Leon, man, because that crowd in Leon, I think I went even there and my eardrum still hurt from Leon. Right, so right, I right, just right, remember, right. like, it's essentially, I felt like Leon was a whole takeover. Like, they took over the show. The fans did take over the show. I think by the end, the Scottish fans were getting a bit more involved, but... The initial stages, I felt like it was a bit lethargic at times and it was a bit quiet. Um, but, bro, by the end of it, I think the biggest pop was for Mum and Rhodes, essentially, and I feel like she deserved it. Yeah. Scan, do you think... I mean, we, I want to ask you two questions. First of all, the whole idea of having each PLE compete with another PLE for crowd participation, for crowd noise, for volume, for energy, does that kind of take away the natural organic crowd feel if you if if you're if you're now watching it for oh i wonder what the crowd does this week this this time opposed to just it being natural and be like oh that crowd was rabid and crazy and then you know we go on to the next one um do you think that kind of takes away it, it being a, a bit of a special with the pay-per-views and and a second question is 
in returns of the I Quit match, where do you rank this? And did you really enjoy this I Quit match between Cody and AJ Styles? All right, cool. Well, let me say this thing about the crowd first, man. And it's going to sound a bit like whiny. But I mean, as a parent, um, my youngers are watching watching wrestling as well. When they're saying F U AJ and all of that stuff, it's a bit like, ooh. You know okay. I mean, I mean yeah. um, in terms of the crowd, man, they, that was a premium crowd. So they spent a lot of money to be there. So mm-hmm. as Triple H has said in the in the past, if you paid your money, man, say what you want, basically, you know, as right. long as you don't right. hijack the show, you know. Um, so in that respect, you know, I, I'm 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 curious now. I'm excited when they go to these countries now. Like, I'm excited to see when they go to Germany. What's the German crowd going to be like? What are they going to be chanting? You know. So I like the fact he's kind of put them up against each other. So now each um, uh, premium live event is going to feel unique now because. Nothing's going to feel like the Puerto Rican show or the French show or the Spanish show, you know, I mean, not Spanish, sorry, the Scottish show. So it's, it's, it's kind of giving all of these shows a unique feel, which um, none of WWE's competition can really match right now. And it reminds me of like ECW back in the day because the ECW crowd was nuts, you know. Um, so, yeah, I like that, that additional element. In terms of the I Quit match, I thought it was pretty good. You know, um, I think they're finding new creative ways to kind of, because it was kind of like a like um, Ashton was saying, man, it was kind of a bit played out in terms of what you can do with the I quit match. It gets a bit tedious after a while with the referee constantly saying, do you quit? Do you not? And you're like, no, you know, that's not the finish. Like, But um, yeah. but in saying that, man, I think AJ, AJ kind of went out a bit like with a whimper, man. I, I wanted to see him like, you know, I mean, he gave it up a bit too easily. I don't know, man. Would you yeah, I like didn't it? like... I agree, Scan. I didn't like that finish. I felt that finish could have been better. Um, especially, you know, you had the Mother Rhodes doing the slaps and all that. I thought AJ was going to go a bit too far and maybe um, handcuff the mother, use the cuffs on the mom, or maybe put, 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 put Cody in the cuffs, put Cody in the cuffs, and maybe put the mother in a chokehold. And that's when Cody says, I quit. And I thought, oh my, we might... We might actually get a new world champion here. But obviously that didn't make sense because you want Cody to have the belt for as long as possible. Um, but I don't, I, I just feel this, the finishing could have been better. One thing I did like about the finishing, the finish was when Cody had the steps in his hands and he's asked his mom for permission to use it on AJ. That was nice. That was a nice touch. But I agree with Scan. I felt like the way AJ said I quit was a bit, Crazy, but AJ now obviously he's probably gonna take some time off from WWE for a little while. He's gonna be uh, having a match at Noah. This will be his Noah, uh, not Noah Pro Wrestling, his first ever match at Noah, which I'm surprised about because he's been in Japan for so long, in and out of Japan for so long. And I could have sworn he has wrestled for Noah before, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but he's going off against Naomichi Murafuji, who is uh, an amazing wrestler. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, AJ Star takes a little bit of time off and rekindle his love for Japanese wrestling. Um, so yeah, Cody Rhodes was the victor. Did you all have that in your prediction books? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, they're not going to take. Yeah. They're not going to take that title. They're just stalling. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was obvious, wasn't it? It was obvious, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. But what you probably didn't have in your prediction books was the next match: the uh, Unholy Union versus Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Shayna Baszler. <laughs> And Zoe starts for the Women's Tag Team Champions. I had a little chat with Bianca Belair before this match. Let's get into that right now. Is the hey, Bianca. Um, we're in Scotland. How are you feeling? Today? I'm feeling good. Excited to be here. First time having a PLE here in Scotland. Uh, jump starting it with SmackDown tonight. And just looking forward to defending these titles right here in a triple threat tag match. Um, with your tag team partner, Jade. tag team partner, Jade. It, I always thought that we would be defending our titles in tag team you know matches but now with a triple threat i've never even been a part of a triple threat tag team match so it's going to be interesting it's going to be fun and uh, the chemistry between you and jade has rapidly it's it, like it's like i heard you say earlier in the interview it looks like you're having fun yeah. um when you first squared off against each other in the royal rumble earlier this year you both had the gorilla press spot crowd was going crazy 
But it seems that like now it's just more of a sisterhood. It's not seeming like it's going to be a rivalry, <laughs> as some people would have thought. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there was always rumblings of us being a dream match. Yeah. Going yeah. Against Even way other. before. Yeah. Way before. Uh, but I think that it's way more impactful for us to start together as a tag team. And I think we're going to do amazing things with this tag team division and, and with these titles. And, you know, it is a sisterhood. Uh, we just really clicked organically. But at the same time, there's always competition there. Even, even between us now being a tag team, but it's competition of uh, us pushing each other pushing each other to be the absolute best like i want her to do good but i want to do better she wants me to do good but she wants to do better and in the end we're just going to be an amazing tag team and be champions i want to talk about the the epic moment of the big three i call you guys the big three naomi jade and bianca when you guys made that entrance at wrestlemania it looked great i was said to my, my niece was like who are these i said that's destiny's child that's what that is <laughs> <laughs> um talk about that like how special was that that's that's history in the making that was very very special the fact that we got to do that all together that the three of us and we got to have that amazing entrance i felt like I was like at the VMAs about to perform yeah. and um, you know just going out there and being able to do that together and be representation and being able to you know Jay get her first win at Wrestlemania and then me continue to be undefeated just to have that moment together meant everything and I think that it was great representation for everyone. Thank you very much for your time Jay. I can't wait to see what you do this weekend. Okay, that was a great chat with Bianca Belair. Let's talk about this women's championship match, guys. I'm going to go with Del first. Del, did you have this uh, as your prediction? And uh, what did you think of this match? But if you were a betting man, that is how you flip money quick. Because I don't think anybody anticipated that win. The only thing I will say, after they won that title match, was when I started to turn for the main event and say, actually this ain't happening the way we're all anticipating because yeah. I was like, because my initial thing, what I said is they can't have a, an event in Scotland with no Scottish winners. And when the yeah. girls won the tag team match, I was like, Oh wait, they're keeping the title on priest. And my boy was like, how do you know that? I was like, it all makes sense. I was like, it's all kind of playing out now. And I just felt, I thought it was such a shock, but do you know what? It was a great moment, man. You could see how much it meant to both of them. And, I, I spoke to both of them previously at WrestleMania and other events. And you know what? They are two off camera, two of the nicest people to me and to other, everyone else. And then that's the journalist. So it's like when you like you seeing them on camera play their role, but like as I, as a, from a human side of things, seeing them get their flowers and get their title match in their home country and to then win the titles, it was a beautiful moment. But I do want to say, I think it was too early to take the titles off Jade and Bianca. That's uh, Ashton, what... So now that Bianca and Jade are no longer tag team champions, what do they do with them next? Is there going to be a chance for they challenge for it and a rematch clause, give the titles back to them so they become two-time champions? Was this a misstep from WWE or do you think it was the right decision? Yeah, I agree with that. I, I feel it was, it's too early for them to have split up the, uh, the tag titles, but... I wonder whether this is just the beginning of the story of them like failing. Maybe they get a rematch and they fail to win that. Um, and then they, then them two are like, you know, start falling out. And I, the, th the thing is for me, they're definitely going to face each other, but I can't see, I don't know who's the heel in this situation. That's a good, like, that's a good I, point. I'd go Bianca. I don't see Bianca as, out of there. Do you? I want, I want I, a Bianca yeah. Hill. I want a Bianca. I want to see it. Oh, yeah. We've seen, I, no one's really seen like, a top level Bianca Hill, and I think it would be quite exciting to watch. Mm. As much as he's obviously amazing, I think she'd be a great hill as well, yeah. man. Scan, um, what did you think of the, the, the triple threat tag team match? And uh, where, where do you think they go with Jade and Bianca after this? Um, I think you know, having them drop the straps, you know, like like Dell was saying, man, there's there's a kind of like a little cheat code to the way um, Triple H books his PLEs. He always literally has one title change. So we kind of got our one title change for the for the show, you know. Um, but I mean, in in regards to the to um, Jade and um, Bianca, man, it'd be interesting to see how they get on in the the solo ranks. But I mean, they they're starting to gel so well as a team. They got that that really good double mm. finisher move that they got. So I think they'll probably bounce back and win it again, man. I feel like women. I mean, I mean, all all competitors get criticised in that ring, especially when you make mistakes and whatnot. But I think with women, 
it gets mm. exaggerated to the next degree. It's, it's insane. And I think Jade, obviously, Jay Cargill, she she had a botch where she slipped off the ropes. But I go, I go online and I see people just blasting her like she's not ready, she's not this, she's not that. Accidents happen in the ring. I mean, I mean, nobody said a damn thing when Damien Priest, um, oh, yeah. you know, got his legs caught in the ropes. You know what I mean? That so it's hell, by the way. It, it, which looks really painful, exactly. Yeah, well, I think, yeah. I think, and, and it's obvious, it's obvious to everybody that Jay. Um, not... I, I heard somewhere there was something wrong with the top rope, um, actually, at the event, right? Right, which I'm not Did surprised you notice with some of the matches. Um, like for example, with Bailey, she she refused to do her move off the top rope, she did her elbow drop from the middle rope, okay. and, I've, um, and I know it's a referee having a word with AJ Star if you watch it back, kind of telling him to stay away from him, so. That is interesting. So there you go. That's something to think. That's something to think about when it comes to these situations and why people might have potentially made some mistakes during the match. But even if it wasn't anything wrong with the top rope, and Jay did make a mistake, which she has done before, and as, as other wrestlers do all the time, we all know that Jay's not yet the finished article. But there is so much potential for this woman to be one of the biggest things in wrestling. I just find it insane that people, anyone that will criticize Jay at this moment, I just think it's absolutely insane. But anyway, I just wanted to put that piece out there because I, I, I want to defend. Uh, defend these no, women, it, and they're great. It needs you know? to be said, man. Yeah. It needs to, you've seen it so many times, and I think, like, we're talking people who are on the main roster at the top level right now make mistakes. Yeah, on sure. on the on the on the men side of things. So it's like, if they are able to have the luxury of being able to make a mistake, like, why should, like, like you said, Jade isn't the finished article, and essentially she's learning the WWE way a lot more on the main mm -hmm. roster, which I think is a lot harder, and it's. That match, was, for a triple threat match, it was quite fast paced. You usually have a lot of people laying around. And like, I I feel like, for me, I've seen LA Knight make mistakes. Was he yeah. probably the hottest superstar of the like top, past 12 months? There's definitely an argument for him to be top two. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, if people aren't like, I'm not going to sit here and say people should get onto LA Knight because they shouldn't. He's a no. veteran. He's been doing it for years. So if he's able to make mistakes, why is someone who is relatively new to the WWE game, they should have the luxury of being able to make those mistakes too, man. Um, where do where does anybody see how long this reign Isla Dawn and Alba Fire will be for do you think this was a uh, a title change for something for the scottish fans and they will have it for a few months and then and then lose it at SummerSlam, or do you think they might go all the way with these two and give them a long run anyone could answer this whoever wants to go I've, first i'd <laughs> like yeah, to I'd, see them get a run but i don't think i'd like to see them get a run no i don't see it okay but well, who do knows you think, do you think jade do you think jade and bianca will win it back here's the thing that i think they will they're gonna do they're gonna put the titles on chelsea and piper i think that is where mm. I think they're putting the titles ah, back there. Right, right, Chelsea right. is just man. She is. She knows the game better. Than, like her, in, like what she did on the entire the entire game of Chelsea Creek. She's just so good, man. She just gets mm -hmm. it. She yeah. get like. Do you know what I mean? She gets it, and I feel like it could lead into those two getting the title. Do you know what? A triple threat match between Bianca. Um, Bianca and Jade, and then I think if you involve Chelsea and Piper, that then could essentially set up the turn of either Bianca or Jade. Whereas yeah. it's just like I feel like if you just put because the thing is, because then Bianca and Jade don't need to get pinned, and I think that helps it as well. So I think that's gonna that's where I think we're gonna get the start to get. I think SummerSlam, I think, is gonna be a lot bigger than most people anticipating this year already. I heard they that. also had to find a way of beating Bianca and. Um, Jade Cargill because they're so like when we think of star power compared to the rest of the tag division I think they kind of put themselves into a corner because they're yeah, always yeah. going to like run over each tag team yeah for sure maybe it's good that they important. yeah yeah maybe something special and it shows that they they can be vulnerable they're not just this immortal yeah. tag team they can even though they didn't get pinned or whatnot but they can still lose the titles you know what I mean so what well, they have so you know um all right, let's let's talk about the Intercontinental Championship match. Now, going into this, I had Chad Gable winning. I was so confident he was going to win. I thought this is Gable's time. There's no way he's going to lose this. Obviously, I was wrong. But this is, looks like it's leading to a big win for Gable, if not the next pay-per-view, which is in Money in the Bank, maybe even at SummerSlam. Um, what did you guys think of this match? Let's go to your first scan. Chad Gable versus Sami Zayn. Were you excited for this? And what was your thoughts? 
Um, yeah, I was just like you, um, Skillet, man. I, I, I definitely had my money on Gable for this one. It felt like it was time. You know, we had the whole thing about you guys breaking the news about the contract situation. Yeah. You know, the story technically is the hottest story in WWE right now. You know, um, so you want to see it play out. But with that being said, man, you know, there, there's, there's still levels to go. So, you know, even though they've kind of, um, you know, not gone the predictable route with this, you know, I have a sneaking suspicion with Money in the Bank being in Canada, you know, they might do another Drew and see what happens. So, uh, that's interesting. So, yes, you just both about um, breaking the news. Yes, um, myself, Mex, and James Delo from the Grilla Position podcast, we had an interview with Chad Gable where he actually said on air for the first time to anybody to hear that he has signed a new contract to sign a five-year extension with WWE. Um, Daryl, are you happy to hear this news from Chad? And what do you think of Chad right now in this new persona, this new heel turn of his? Oh, is, he doing, oh. is he doing great work? He's doing magic, man. I'll be honest. He he's been so good. Of this is my favorite Gable by a mile, and it's right. actually I feel like him and Sami Zayn bring out the best in each other a lot. Like whether it's on the mic, whether it's on the way in which they sell. Like the spot with the ankle lock during the title match where Sami jumps up onto the barricade. I don't think that got as much respect as it deserved yeah. because it was like. These two have trained together. They know each other. It's there's more of that, like more so than any other match on on the card. I feel like, like you said, it was it's, it is the hottest story right now. And I feel more and more people are getting behind Gable. Like it is so, like because everyone's seen what he's produced year after year after year with WWE, and we know he got given got, like. He got given the short straw a little bit under previous creative teams. But yeah. so to see him now bounce back from that and be probably, I would say, one of the hottest characters, not just in WWE, but in wrestling right now. Like, when people are comparing him to an old school Kurt Angle, like, that is crazy. Like, to ha have those, like, comparisons, e even if it's a joke because he's, like, he's been through the Olympic game as well, to even have those comparisons, I think, just speaks volumes. And I feel like, for me, I would have Gable win money in the bank. Mm. I would have Gable win money in the bank. Interesting. Yeah, I'd have him. What I would have him do is because I've seen some people say, "Oh, he would use the money in bank for the Intercontinental Title." I'd say, "No, I think he. I think this is now his redemption arc. We've seen it with Liv Morgan and her revenge tour, and it, I think we're about to start the Chad Gable revenge tour, and the tour's going to end mm. with him, maybe, maybe with a world title, if not, definitely an Intercontinental Title." Ashton, what's your prediction going forward with the Alpha Academy? Do you think it's going to get revamped? Do you think there'll be new members in? Do you think he will kick out Akira and Maxine and maybe get some new members in? Or do you, and, and do you honestly believe this is all leading to a match between Otis and Chad? Or do you think Otis will still do Chad's dirty doing? Um, I think that this is the beginnings of Otis and Chad Gable rivalry. Um, I think um, I, this this match was a really hard one for me to call. I had no idea which way it was going to go because Sami Zayn has just been Gunther, who, who's been with the champion for like 666 days. It felt a bit weird for Sami to lose it so early. But Chad yeah, Gable, like you said, has so much momentum. So I think now, apparently it's the fifth time he's lost the Intercontinental match. So... Um, I think he's going to need to get some new people, and I think that's going to be the Creed brothers. Yeah, yeah, and maybe Ivy Nile and Ivy Nile. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think that's you know what's really great with that story as well is obviously Ivy was the one who originally told Maxine to leave the Alpha Academy because of the way she was being treated. That is so oh, Dell, come on. <laughs> Full circle moment. Hey, let's see what happens. That's that'll be great. Uh, let's get into Bailey versus Piper Nevin. I had a chat with Piper Nevin as well, leading up to all her experience in Scotland, leading to this moment. This, uh, this her main event in a women's title match in, in her home country against Bailey. Let's talk about her and let's see her thoughts on this. This weekend is so important, not just to me, but I think Scotland as a whole. Like, this is a culmination of so much work of so many people, and 
we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the fans. This is, this is the product of all the fans coming to those grassroots shows, all the people coming to those community centres and town halls and, and coming and cheering us on because that's what made the boom. You know, that is what made the boom. And Drew as well. Like, I really credit Drew for all of this. Like, him leaving Scotland and going to WWE, he made it possible for all of us, you know, and, and people can only achieve what they believe. And him going and becoming a WWE superstar, that really made it possible for us to think, oh, we can do this. And and that and, and it's just been a big ripple effect from there. And, and thanks to him now, we're having our own PLE. So everyone should be so proud of themselves. Absolutely. Like, I could only imagine how hard the grind is. Like, there must have been days where you just feel, is this worth it? You're, 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 put, you're training every day. You're eating the right things. You're putting your body on the line. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes you might feel a bit, you know, after a show, you might be like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. This is like, so to get to here, it must feel unreal. Um, you and Chelsea have a, a great chemistry <laughs> in this on screen. <laughs> what is it like off screen? Um, off screen, um, love her to death. She honestly is like she's my hype woman on screen and off screen. Um, I'm actually not really the most confident person okay. in real life, and and Chelsea has Chelsea's never made me feel less. You know, she's always built me up. She's always made me feel great. She's always made me feel. Um, you know, just as great as wrestler she is, just as beautiful as she is, just as talented as she is, and um, she's just like a wonderful energy to be around. And you know, if you can get past the, she's very shrill, even in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you talk about confidence. I mean, it's crazy you say that because it's for us, for us fans, we don't we don't see it that way. We see you as someone that's very oozing confidence. You caught a really good promo uh, leading up to t today's event against Bailey. You spoke truth. Can we see more of? that kind of pipe and heaven going forward? I really hope so, um, because that is a side of me that I've been wanting to showcase um, to the WWE Universe for a long time, and I know the the people in charge now knew that I had that in me because I would do things like that for them before in NXT UK, so I really think that that was a, a nice little test, and I really think I knocked out the park. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so hopefully we get to see more of that. I would like that. And, you know, I, a lot of them... Some American fans were a bit iffy about the accent. The only way to get used to it is hear it. Absolutely. Who cares? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Last, <something>. Exactly. <laughs> Lastly, we've got some amazing Scottish talent yes. over there. Are we going to see some sort of union? Some sort of oh. faction with the three of you? I think you guys will absolutely tear it. Some kind of Celtic connection, <laughs> perhaps? Some sort of Celtic Maybe Ooh, I've heard that before, I don't know. That's, that's, I don't know. A, that's a nice name, that's isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll just keep that one in the back pocket. Good idea. Who knows? But hmm. well, maybe one day. Give you a credit on that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much for your time, Piper. Good luck tonight. Take, take, oh, this weekend, sorry. Thank take care. All right, uh, guys, what did you think of this match? Bailey versus Piper Nevin for the WWE Women's title. Scan, let me go to you first. Uh, did you enjoy this match? Yeah, man, this is like, it felt like finally they'd taken the reins off Piper Nevin, man. You know, it's like she, her career up until this point in the, on the main roster had been like on autopilot, you know. Um, so we got to see like a, a wider range of her moveset, her ring psychology, you know, she put on a great display. I, I never expected her to win, to be honest, but, you know, yeah. I expected her to put on a, a, a solid outing and that's what we got. Ashton, um, as, when I spoke to Piper, she's, she said that she was never really one that's big on confidence in terms of like speaking, in terms of outspoken or cutting promos and like that. She cut a good promo before leading to this match on SmackDown. What did you think of the promo and what did you think of her performance against Bailey? Yeah, I thought I, the promo was great. Like it was, it was basically her introducing herself to like the wider audience, audience of yeah. how she's been around for like the last 20 years. I think the shame about that is that they put that in just one promo. It would have been good if they built her before we got to this match because they've always known that they were having a clash at the castle. So I think they could have done a better job creatively of um, putting like more, putting her in more matches, giving her bigger wins because then she wouldn't have to have said all that in that the promo last week because yeah. people would have got to know her. Um, but I thought she she did really well, and it was really great. It was I remember watching her like seven years ago in like a small um, uh, little arena in Norwich like seven years ago, and just to see her doing it now, like at Clash of the Castle, like I bet it was great for her, you know, in front of you know her her home country. 
Yeah. Um, but the MVP was um, Chelsea Green Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dell, you were singing Chelsea Green's praises earlier in this episode. She was hilarious coming out with the Rey Mysterio mask after she got banished from the ringside. Um, you mentioned Chad Gable being a potential Money in the Bank winner. Could you see Chelsea Green maybe being the women's Money in the Bank coming to yes, Money in the Bank? My two picks currently is either Gunther or Gable for Money in the Bank. And then Chelsea Green, just she has to win that women's briefcase. There is no, there, I don't care what option they put on the table. It doesn't <laughs> like it doesn't make more sense than Chelsea Green. I think something in which I would say it almost like I would say the priest winning money in the bank almost backfired because of how long yeah. he held the briefcase. I feel like the cash in really saved it. Yes, like the cash in is what saved him winning that briefcase essentially because I feel ninety nine percent of the O2 Arena anticipated it to be LA night. I think right. we all kind of anticipated that. Mm. But I feel like this time they can't let that chance go. I feel like Chelsea Green has to win that briefcase. Even if she has a short women's title run. And you know what would be great? Chelsea wins money in the bank. Ends up sneakily winning the world's title somehow. And it ends up in her face and Piper for the title. Because I feel like the magic they've done as a duo, because they essentially just got thrown together. It wasn't mm -hmm. planned. It was essentially just getting put together. And the magic they've managed to create, it's just been wonderful, man. And like we said, like Chelsea Green Mysterio, like I <laughs> like I don't feel like many things can catch you out or catch you off guard with wrestling anymore. That was one of the things that still managed to do that for me. So being sat there at 30 years old, still laughing at the same product I was laughing at 15, 20 years ago, is like that's that's great for me, man. That's why I absolutely loved it. I totally agree. I think um I think I think she'd be great. I don't think I don't think I have a good like memorable women's money or bank winner since Carmella. I think was Car Carmella was the first ever women's money in the bank, right? Yeah, it's with James Ellsworth. That's yeah, what James Ellsworth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so technically, I, James Ellsworth was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, but when Carmella had it, she made a pageantry about it. She was always with the briefcase. Mm. She was always doing stuff, always making sure it involved money in the bank and reminding people. And and then we've had great money in bank women's uh winners in after that but not really memorable and i feel like chelsea will definitely make that a memorable cash in and also mm. in a an and, and, and angle with it week in to week out but yes uh shout out to bailey bailey won um she retained her title i think we all knew that she was gonna win and retain what's next for bailey who who will be her next competitor do you guys predict i think there's a hill zone mm. coming for bailey's next competitor so i'll be honest I feel like things are in the women's division, especially. I feel like the people who were the hills are getting along great, and the people who were the faces are getting along great. And I feel like there just needs to be a bit of fuel to the fire, I think, is what we're going to be getting over the next couple of weeks. I feel like we're going to start getting some turns coming. Um, you've obviously seen with Randy and the Cody side of things. I want it, I want Bailey's next challenger to be Roxanne Perez. That's me. I want her to get called up and I want her to have that shot because I feel like they'd have a great match. And I, that's how I want Roxanne to make her way onto the main roster. Because I feel like something in which they've failed to do is Lyra Valkyria is a prime example of how they've called her up, they've booked her in the right matches with the right people. And not just her, but the people in which she's facing, everyone's highlighting their skill set. And I feel like by putting Bailey and Roxanne Perez, that not only grows Bailey's establishment as a as a fighting champion, but it also then exposes Roxanne on the main roster to a much bigger crowd too. A few things I forgot to mention. Um, obviously, on on the end of SmackDown, uh, Solo did mention to Heyman that if he loses to Kevin Owens, that he's coming after Heyman. Obviously, Solo re didn't lose. He won. And then uh, the bloodline attacked Kevin Owens and Randy Orton made the save. I also forgot to mention after the I Quit match, Solo showed up. At, with Tama Tonga and Tam, uh, Tanga Lao, and they attacked uh, Cody Rhodes and Orton and Kevin Owens made the save there. Orton and, Ke and Cody Rhodes, it has to lead to SummerSlam, doesn't it, guys? Or everything, I, it has to be Cody versus Orton. Am I right or am I wrong? I think this yeah. is how I would play it out, yeah. is I think that the save happens from Roman Reigns. So I feel like the match is happening... I don't feel like Cody and Randy face at SummerSlam. 
Okay. I feel like if they do, I feel like the turn happens at SummerSlam. There's like two ways you can go about it. You can either have the turn at SummerSlam or you can have Roman returning at SummerSlam. And they're yeah. the only two things that I think are going to happen. It's it's either going to be Cody against Solo or someone in, in the bloodline and Roman Reigns essentially comes back to kind of, no pun intended, take the reins back for himself. Or you have the turn, you have Cody win the match. The bloodline tries to get involved. Randy saves him. Bloodline are walking away. Randy hits an RKO. Everyone's going to be like soaking that up, man. I, d- I don't know how Randy Orton just gets a face in the hill turn. So, and everyone's still behind him when he turns anyway. No one can hate Randy. No one likes hating Randy Orton, man. Scan, what, what's I your just... prediction, Scan? Sorry, I will get to you, Ashton. Sorry, sorry. We'll get to no you. Yeah, I mean, I like the subtle storytelling, man. When they when they saved um, Cody after the match, you could see um, Orton just staring at the title. Um, but it was very subtle how they did it, man. Yeah, um, I, that's what I that's what I do. I clocked that as well, Scan. I clocked that as well. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it's a slow build, man. I think at Money in the Bank will probably get the three on three match, maybe with a new Bloodline members um, coming in. But um, yeah, I think I think the subtle turn is coming, man. We we, we are gonna get. Um, or in, at Cody at some point. Ashton, do you agree or do you have a different point of view? Yeah, I, I agree with Scan. I, was, I, was, I think that there'd be like a three-on-three three match at Money in the Bank. And it all depends when Roman's supposed to be coming back. But if if he's not coming back by a SummerSlam, then you could have Randy Orton cost uh, Kevin Owens and Cody Rose a match. Um, like Kevin Owens could get pinned and make the bloodline look bigger because at, at the moment I, d- I don't feel that solo sokoa if we're going to get solo sokoa against roman reigns he needs more bit like he needs to be built more so if he beats yeah. cody rhodes kevin owens and randy orton um at money in the bank that sets him up quite well i think so, well yeah. i'm lo- i'm loving the slow burn build-ups in this era with triple h right now not everything's too predictable everything's taking its time chad gable's taking its time to really implode and you know, and, and become IC champ. That's taking its time. You got the Cody Orton potential feud. That's taking its time. The bloodline, uh, bloodline storyline with Solo. Even members like Jacob Fatu signed after Ninja. He's not even introduced yet. That they're taking their time with, with Jacob Fatu. They just signed Hikaleo, haven't they? Because they've trademarked the hmm. name Taller Tonga. So he's obviously going to come. That's in. it. That's his I, middle I, name. I, it's a play on his middle name, I believe. Yeah, that's why apparently. Oh, yeah, that's why yeah. they gave it away. I was like, damn. <laughs> and funny enough, he's the tallest member as well, which is funny. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's taking its time for him to introduce him into the new bloodline. It's just, I'm loving it. I'm loving the slow burn. It's not overly done. And then you're forgetting about it. Jade and Bianca's taking their time. That's obviously going to implode at one point. But that's, you know, they're taking their time with it. Or maybe not. Maybe they may continue to be women's tag team champions for, or, or, or tag team. No, nah, no, nah, that's going to implode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let, let's get into the main event. Damien Priest versus the home, con- the hometown country boy. He's not from Glasgow. He's from Air Scotland. But... You know, every every part of Scotland is a hometown for Drew McIntyre. He's their national hero. He opened all the gates for Scottish wrestling. He made ICW what it is today. Opening the floodgates for all the Scottish wrestlers that is in WWE right now. Thanks to Drew McIntyre or around different companies, AEW, New Japan, you name it. A lot of debt is owed to Drew McIntyre. So you would think this has to be the perfect place for him to become mm-hmm. the new world heavyweight champion is in Scotland. He didn't get it done at Cash in the Castle in Wales. Um, you know, he won the WWE Championship during the pandemic. You thought, okay, they will give him that moment again at WrestleMania, which he did win the title, but then he lost it 30 seconds later because of a CM Punk and a cash in with Drew McIntyre. Surely they were going to push the trigger this weekend. But alas, that did not happen. Let's go to you first, Ashton. What did you think of this match between Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest? Did you have Drew McIntyre winning this or did you think Damian was going to retain? So I feel like this is quite controversial because all I've, I've seen all over X people saying, how, how come Drew never, uh, how come Drew didn't win? I, I predicted that Drew wasn't going to win uh, purely because of the, the story they're telling right now. They're telling the story of, CM Punk is going to get his own back on uh, uh, Drew for um, injuring him. 
and just how Drew's been such a hypocrite. So I I didn't see it happening at all. There was only one moment in the match where I thought when um, Drew hit the Claymore out of nowhere. Um, and in that moment, I was like, oh, they're actually going to do it. But I just didn't see it happening. I really didn't. And uh, and then obviously the clues of CM Punk being in Glasgow as well. Um, but I feel, if we're talking about money in the bank, Drew McIntyre said how much he hates money in the bank, how much he thinks it's so stupid. And this whole run at the moment of Drew McIntyre being a hypocrite, I just think it's perfect for him to win it now. Yeah. I like that. Aston, um, I like that, Aston. I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. That's a good shout. Um, Scan, what did you think of this match? Did you have it? Did you have this in the cards that Drew was going to lose this one? Um, do you know what, right? I kind of thought Drew was going to win, if I'm honest, you know, but I actually enjoyed watching this match live, you know, because there was so many twists and turns and I generally couldn't predict how it was going to end, you know. Um, and yeah, it was, I, I think it's wise that they kept the belt on on um, Priest because I still feel like he's not had a proper run yet. Yeah. He doesn't feel like yeah. the main guy on Raw, you know, I still feel there's a few more gears he can go up. So I, I, I want to see literally how it really pans out for him. But for that to happen, he's got to keep the belt to at least to SummerSlam. So, um, mm. yeah, man, overall, I was happy with it. Two questions for Dell. Dell, now you had the CM Punk running as the guest ref, well, as the surprise referee just to troll yeah. Drew and cost him the title. And also, I want your thoughts on Damian Priest. Now, I asked him a question at the press conference about the naysayers, and you can see how passionate he got about proving people wrong about how a credible champion that he is, how much of a credible champion he is. Do you see that for Damian in the, down the line? Do you see that he can prove people wrong and become a champion that people could actually really talk about years, years down the line? A hundred percent. I feel like, again, we always come back to it, and we were speaking about it earlier, long-term booking. Triple H has said it to fans. He said it to media. He said it to everyone. It isn't the same WWE in which it was 10, even five, a couple of years ago. Like we're in this era now where this long-term storytelling has really started to take over. So I feel like if you were to give Priest the title, just book him strongly every week, it would all, fans would then be like, oh, great. We've got another John Cena on our hands who's just invincible and he beats everybody. Fans didn't like that. And I feel like Triple H really understands more so than any other time in that what the fans are really after. And I feel like this is how I personally would book it and how I think it should be booked. I feel like you have the judgment day turn on him and he remains as champion because yeah. I feel like he's always going to have this caveat around him of could he really do it if he didn't have the boys there? Could he really have won money in the bank of people? Like, could he really this? Could he really that? And I think he's probably one of the most underrated, like, the guy is tall. He's a big don, man. Like he, and to move the way he does, so to be, wait, is he six nine? I think he's six eight. Yeah, he's, he's, like, so like he's that. crazy yeah. tall, bro. And, like, and, he's and he, is he taller than me, man? Bro, he's and he's um he's karate capoeira style kicks is crazy, nope. bro. No, nope. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. When I was watching him live doing them kicks and and, and he was dodging, dodging them, I was shouting like capoeira, capoeira. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon he could kick me a hairline back on, bro. I'm not what even joking. Thousand, <laughs> One thousand percent, bro. I, back to back to the original question, man. I feel like David <laughs> Priest, bro, he's unbelievable. Do you know what? I really liked his run, like in NXT. I liked the stuff with Bad Bunny, which then ended up becoming a rivalry with, with Bad Bunny in Puerto Rico. And I feel like I would say his build over the past two years, if you actually look back at what he did, I feel like it, he's warranted his status on the main roster and at the top of that card. Sure. But it's now about something in which I always speak about is it's getting the right rivalry. Bron Breaker was someone who I've spoken of, like it, it just kind of felt like he needed that storyline to get and when he got put with Baron Corbin, it took him to a whole new height in the next heat. Yeah. Whereas I feel like now you give Priest the right rivalry, which I personally think is going to be against Finn Balor. And I feel like that mm. is how you really cement this title run. Amazing. That's a good shout, Dale. What did you what did you uh who, whoever wants to answer this question feel free to the the because obviously I saw it live in the audience. So I didn't get the, the privilege to see the, the screen, the, the mm. camera angle that you guys got to see. I watched it back this morning and I didn't realize that they shot it in a way where you didn't see CM Punk's face when he came into the ring. He said, yeah, the bro. Head, and then he counted and he did the deuces, the same deuces that Drew <laughs> did. 
I, and the brain of yeah. Steve Bump and, and, and oh, amazing stuff. Um, but I was screaming at my TV. I was yeah. screaming at my TV. And the reason was, yeah, I was looking at it and I was like, I thought mm. the sound went. Or like, because you hear the you hear the crowd go one, two, and everyone just starts screaming. Because you don't see a kick out. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then yeah. I when you hear the crowd's mood change and they start cheering, and then the camera angle panned, and he's just him with the deuces up, just <laughs> looking at him, <laughs> grin on his face. So yeah, the level of petty that I need to get to. What, like, to fly across the world to ruin a man's title, man, <laughs> in his own country. That's a level of petty that I'm there hey, for. It's <laughs> great, great booking. Uh, yes. Really, really good booking. In the press conference after his punk came and did it like a, 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 he wasn't supposed to be in a Celtic kit. Conference. Came in with a Celtic kick and he was just, just straight up just saying, oh, why would I want Drew to be happy? I don't want to have good things. He injured me. He was gleeful about it. He boasted about it. I'm here to destroy it. I don't care. I'm not, I don't have no He regrets. said he was going to ruin his life. I think yeah. he said he laughed at my tricep. He laughed at me hurting my tricep. He's like, I think he said, he said I'm going to ruin his life. I think it's the term that he said. Punk so brought, bro, he brought donuts for all of us to eat, but with none of us, but everybody was scared to grab <laughs> I was like, I should have brought, I should have grabbed one, man. But anyway, but yeah, I, I, great, great, great ending. Um, And, and, and now, it, you know, it's, it's going to get real on, on Raw, on SmackDown. Leading up, you know, Punk's going to announce that he's injury free on SmackDown in Chicago. Mm. Drew might be there to spoil the party. You know, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be a, a this heat, this rivalry is becoming really bad blood, and it's quite convincing that these two don't like each other in real life. Even though I start, I'm now convinced it's a bit of a work. I think they're working us. Um, I, I think, think it's like the F one because because at first. They, they, previous heat and i feel yeah, like now yeah, they yeah, kind of like yeah. self buried the hatchet and then I, I agree i feel like they are capitalizing on hate that they actually did have once for each other <laughs> but like even like this proves that you know anything punk does he's gonna get criticized for like punk was obviously backstage and the rumblings that we saw him all the media saw him backstage were like ah Punk exposed himself to us, but obviously we're media, so let's keep it quiet. Let's not spoil it for other people. It's not much. But then Punk's taking photos of people in the hotel with fans in the hotel. And <laughs> he's in this, he's in this shop in, in buying a Celtic shirt, and somebody sees him and takes a photo and he posts it online, and that goes people see it and goes viral. So the rumblings was going into this like, oh, Punk's a bit of a prick. He's ruining the moment. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, what moment is he ruining? Punk is not like Punk is not active in WWE. Like it's not like Punk is just been away for years and he's spoiling the surprise punk is active in the wrestling why would he not be in scotland you know what i mean then yeah. you can say oh but then he's taking photos he hasn't been on tv for a little while so he could have kept quiet but then maybe that is something they planned where they mm. where they know if i do this people are going to be like well punk's, punk's going to show up build some anticipation and it makes a heat on me i don't know who's the heel in this storyline is punk a heel is drew a heel i don't know they're both heels, i think maybe. drew's the heel Unless he's yeah, in Scotland, Hill. and I think that is it. <laughs> like, right. as soon so, as so he Punk's passes playing, that border, right? Who, who so, so Punk's playing Hill in this weekend <laughs> by doing all this. All this stuff is building up to Hill antics on Punk side. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So yeah. it's it's um I don't know. I get the feeling, and, and the way Punk was talking about him in the press conference, I get the feeling. Nah, I think you guys are actually might be might be cool now. Drew even said to Chats to Jay Zelo that oh him and Punk had an argument about the finish. I don't know if Drew's working. Drew James, he might be working it. Yeah. Like, I, no you one. know, it's like it's all I don't know, it's all up in the air. But or I say all this to say that when it comes to a close at SummerSlam, it's gonna be one of the most exciting matches on that card. 100 oh, percent Definitely. I yeah. can't wait for SummerSlam, man. I feel like yeah. there's a lot, and obviously big night tonight of the Raw. Yeah. Bro, you know what? We all know what's happening tonight. Mm. What do you think? I've been bro, you, you've not seen the QR codes. You need to keep up. Oh, with yeah. Tonight, oh right? yeah. <laughs> The debut of Uncle Howard, Uncle Howdy's faction, the, the Wyatt Six. Mm. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This this stuff, I don't know if this stuff's gonna be good, man. I don't know. I feel the, have a, I feel the same. Yeah, have, you have just have go. to see how it goes. We'll have to go. It, it's on the Triple H yeah. guidance now, so it might be better. But I'm gonna be real. I didn't really like the Fiend. I only liked two things from the Fiend, and that was his debut when he showed up against Finn. I thought that was amazing. And the mm. match he had with John Cena at WrestleMania, I thought that was one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. But as a whole, I just think they missed the mark with the Fiend for me. It was too cartoony. It was a bit borderline wrestle crap. Like, you know, the stuff that all the terrible wrestle, ang wrestle angles that you had from WCW back in the day and maybe yeah. even WWF. Mm. 
I just didn't think it worked for me. But let's see. It's a faction this time. They might make it work. I we'll think see. they're going to smash out of the park, I'll be honest. I, I feel like I, they've picked the right people. I think, that... I think that this debut tonight will smash it out of the park. I think this will be a memorable debut. I mean, oh, that's amazing. But can they sustain it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. The, with the names being mentioned, I think that's the only thing that kind of plays in their favour. True. I feel Joe like, Gracie, seen, Nikki bro, Cross. Gacy has been doing unbelievable stuff. Yeah, NXT. yeah. So I Joe, have to give him a shout that's the exciting so thing for me. Joe Gracie. The Joe Gracie being part of it is quite exciting. You've got Nikki Cross, apparently. Rowan, obviously coming back. Yeah. Uh, Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis. That's very and interesting. And I think he's been someone who's been very underutilised. I feel like yeah. he's... Was you were stand and deliver last year when he made the return to help Indy win the title and he comes slight I, I've been seeing that, that. yeah that was amazing oh, that was so good and who else there's one more person I'm missing uh, Alexa Six, Bliss but I think she's like no but I feel like there's someone else they used to say Braun but like, obviously Braun's not no, I don't think I don't it's think... Braun no I think the first storyline has to be with either Braun or LA though like it, it's I one of those it's those two or Jey Uso it's anything outside of those three you couldn't really make an argument for the story's sake. Whereas I think Jey right. Uso saying that he owns the Fireflies now, there's a story there. Mm -hmm. I feel like... Oh, no, I no, you're right. I think, I think we, we, meant, yeah, we mentioned it. So you're, so you're right. So so, it's both, so Uncle Howdy, Joe Gracie, Dexter Loomis, Nikki Cross, and why am I struggling to mention someone else? Did I mention anyone? Oh, and, and Rowan, yeah? Eric Rowan, yeah. right? And then the six and then will put, and the six will be Alexa Bliss as Sister Abigail. Mm -hmm. She'll probably lead the whole faction. Which is interesting. I think I think Sister Abigail has to lead the faction. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like for me it would make more because I think like just getting Howdy in, being the leader, and it could almost yeah. you've seen with these things happen so many times in wrestling where they kind of they miss, they don't get it just right. But I feel like yeah. they've taken them enough time now to really kind of they could they've got to have some magic coming out of this bro mm. i've been scanning qr codes for four months like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think they're just going to do their their best to like make this work in the like yeah. on bray wyatt they have to yeah well i definitely think the, the debut will be something special mm. for sure well oh, guys thank you, you so much as well man yeah that for sure thank you so there, much bro. for joining me for this review mm -hmm. uh, i hope you've had a good time talking wrestling we'll try and do some more episodes down the line um i've got a chelsea green interview i want to put out as well so we have to i have to make an excuse for us to meet up again and do something hopefully mm -hmm. in person i hope we have a little fun evergreen episode where we talk about all various topics wrestling related um ashton owen where can people find you on in the social platforms for anyone that wants to follow you that likes your views today Mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram, I'm Ashton underscore Owen, and on X, I'm Ashton un Owen underscore. Yeah. Del, where can people find you on the social media uh, platform? At Del Tefik on all my socials, uh, just like my tagline in the video. And last but not least, my brother, where can people find you, Scan, if people want to follow you on social media? Yeah, you can find me at Scan Deuce, S K A N D O U Z, on all platforms, and you can follow my podcast. At the Mega Powers TV Ooh, on the yeah. platform, Mega Powers. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and you can follow me at Skillet World, S K I W L I T World, and follow the Kit Cat Podcast on Instagram. It's the Kit Cat Podcast, and on TikTok as well. But on Twitter, it's at Kick Out Podcast. So make sure you follow us, and we've got some more content coming soon for you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you guys, and have a good day. Take care.